and on. I'd like to call the meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everyone tonight to the meeting of the Peoria Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, the first order of business is a roll call. Uh, Commissioner, oh, thank you. Commissioner Strickman is absent. Commissioner Spranker. Here. Commissioner Loper. He'll be joining us shortly. Uh, Commissioner Hutchinson. Here. Commissioner Lewis is absent. Commissioner Oluski. Here. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Nelson. Here. And I'm Commissioner Golden. Um, I'll begin by reading the opening statement. This commission is composed of the of Peoria citizens who have been appointed by the city council to serve on the, on the commission as a civic responsibility without compensation. Our duty is to study and review planning and zoning issues within the city of Peoria and then forward our recommendations to the city council. All hearings are conducted in accordance with the rules of procedure and Robert's rules of order. Each case will be called in the order in which it appears on the agenda unless otherwise announced during the meeting. On the interest of maintaining a fair and efficient hearing, the commission adheres to the following steps. The chairman calls the case, staff gives a brief report and recommendation, applicant gives a presentation, opposition and support may give testimony, generally limited to three minutes per speaker, applicant may give rebuttal, commission discussion and decision. Anyone wishing to speak tonight must complete a speaker's request form and hand it to the planning assistant on my far left. Please be as brief as possible and do not repeat statements already made by others. Anyone wishing to protest the decision of a, of a commission public hearing item must request a second public hearing before the city council. The request must be submitted in writing to the planning and, and community development department within 10 days after the commission's hearing. All commission recommendations on public hearing items move forward to the regular city council meeting. The City Council will then act on the recommendation of the Commission. They may concur with the decision, modify it, or overturn it. We welcome citizens' comments, and as fellow citizens of Peoria, we thank you in advance for your participation. So this is the final request for public, for a speaker's request forms, if anyone would like to speak tonight. I'm going to begin this evening uh, with the consent agenda. Tonight, um, a consent agenda items are for, are for items that are routine in nature, and tonight they consist of five items. Oh, I'm sorry, before I begin, I'd like to note that Commissioner Loper is present. Um, the consent agenda items is 1C, the disposition of absences, discussion and possible action to approve and excuse the absences of Vice Chair Lee Strickman, I mean, Commissioner Strickman and Alternate Commissioner um, Art Lusky. Uh, 2C minutes, a discussion and possible action to approve the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting held on January 15, 2015. 3C public hearing, conditional use permit, Honest One Auto Care, CU 14 0020, discussion and possible action to consider a request for a conditional use permit to allow a 5,693 5 square foot automotive repair and service facility on a 0.09 acre undeveloped building pad within the Camino a Lago marketplace. The site is generally located east of south east, I mean, yeah, located east of the southeast corner of Lake Pleasant and Deer Valley Road. 4C public hearing or um, conditional use permit west side Sinorama. CU 14-0022, discussion and possible action to consider a request for a conditional use permit to allow full service commercial sign center within the Bell Freeway um, commercial park pad. The property is located at 8581 West Kilton Drive, Suite 207. And last is uh, 5C public hearing. Um, a conditional use permit, Joey and Gina Restaurant, CU 14 0023, discussing an impossible action to consider a request for a conditional use permit to allow 
an outdoor dining area for Joey and Gina's restaurant within the Arrowhead Fountain Center. The proposed patio will be located north of the northwest corner of 83rd and Mariner's Way. Is there any discussion on these items? May I have a motion? Commissioner Loper? Madam Chair, I would move for uh, approval of the consent agenda as presented. And could I please have a second? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Um, commissioners, will you please vote? Uh, thank you, that passes. Um, now we'll move on to new business. And uh, gentlemen, if you're there for the consent agenda items, you're certainly welcome to leave. Thank you. Okay, the first agenda item um, is uh, 6R public hearing zoning tax amendment, TA 14-0003. A public hearing will be held to consider a city of Peoria initiative request to amend article 14-34-A-A16, a gasoline service station signs, effective in effectively increasing the height of the fuel price component from four feet to six feet and establishing standards by which the height will be measured. Staff, could I have your report? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Uh, we're before you this evening to amend a section of the uh, Peoria Zoning Ordinance, uh, 1434 signs. Uh, more specifically, what we're gonna take a look at tonight is the fuel component section, which is 1438.8, the gasoline service station signs. Now currently, uh, this is the way the provision is stated in the ordinance as of right now. And, and the price component of gasoline service station shall not exceed four feet in height or 16 square feet in area. Um, what has prompted the amendment before you this evening is there has been a little bit of confusion in interpreting this sign uh, or interpreting this provision. And the question that kept coming up was, you know, is it four feet in height for the, uh, for the uh, sales component or is the sales component can only be four feet in height? So there gener it's, it's generated discussion not only amongst staff but also amongst uh, uh, sign purveyors in the city. So we took a look at this and thought, you know, we could clear this up a bit. So what we're proposing for you that, to you this evening is uh, just a couple of things. We would like to add some verbiage that clearly demonstrates how and where we're measuring the sign from. So it makes it crystal clear that we're measuring from the top of finish grade or top of curb, whichever is higher. The other thing that we took a look at based on comments that we got back from the sign purveyors out there uh, was a request often to increase that four foot height up to six foot. Now we took a look at um, different um, uh, comprehensive sign packages. Uh, we also looked at some different PAD packages that include signage in there. And one of the common aspects that we found in those was that we were, as a staff and as council and commission, we're generally approving those packages with an increase in height to those price components of those. Uh, most recently, the one that comes to mind is the QT that's going in at um, uh, Rio Vista and Thunderbird Road where we increased that sign height to eight feet. So we thought it was fair to do a couple of things here. We wanted to, A, accomplish and, and put verbiage in that would clearly define how we were measuring these signs. The other thing we wanted to do was increase the height from four foot to six foot. And then as we looked at it a little different, it just made sense to kind of separate the two provisions as itself and make them two separate individuals. And that's what we're requesting from you this evening and that's what's in exhibit A in front of you tonight. Um, just to kind of give you an idea on the two foot uh, increase, I went out and took some pictures of some signs locally. As you can see, it's 83rd and Olive, 91st and Olive. Uh, within a mile of where we're sitting here tonight. And what I did was um, took a picture of those signs and then I measured the fuel component from grade to where we are right now just to give you an idea of what a, a, a four foot sign is gonna look like. For example, the shell in, in, the, in the middle uh, uh, exhibit there, uh, the price component of that sign is four foot from grade where it's measured from that point. Um, 
the QT at Union Hills and Lake Pleasant Parkway, as you can see, is right at about six foot. Uh, Rio Vista and Thunderbird, uh, right at about seven foot. And the highest sign that I found uh, was at uh, 91st and Olive, the Chevron, on the, um, what would be the, the northeast corner there, uh, at eight foot. So that should give you an idea of the different scale and heights of those signs. Now, as we evaluated that, we looked at going possibly to eight foot. We thought that was a little too much. Uh, we all agreed as a staff that, that four foot was probably a little bit too low and we thought that six was uh, uh, just about right based on the, the observations that we were able to make uh, with signs that were in the area. So based on that, we're recommend, recommending approval of uh, the text amendment that you have before you uh, as stated in the staff report. Uh, Madam Chair, that concludes my presentation this evening. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you very much. My Commissioners, pleasure. do you have any questions? Yes, Madam Chair, I have one. Uh, when, uh, this, let's say you, we, we settle on six feet, unless I didn't understand what I was reading, which is entirely possible, it doesn't really describe how big the, the numbers or the letters are to be, does it? In other words, if I wanted to put a sign up that's six feet tall and I wanted five and a half foot numbers across that sign, could I do that? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Spraker, um, the area of the sign is 16 square foot. You know, that's, that's all you get. I don't, I think that it would, it would have to be a proportionate uh, letter height in order to meet that and still be able to get the entire message that you're trying to uh, get through and advertise. So, for example, if, if your gas is 329 and you make your your uh, letter's too big, then you would exceed that 16 square foot and you might not be able to get your entire copy area in that. If, does that answer the question uh, the way I understood it? Well, I, yeah, in a way it does, but what I'm, what I'm asking, am I on, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. What, I, what I'm asking is, uh, if I've got this uh, six by six, right, 36 square foot sign now, or the, that would be the, the, uh, the monument, if it will, and if I wanted to have that whole monument, just the price, without the name of the company on it. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Spraker, no sir, you would not be able to do that because you get basically 16 square foot for the price component of the sign. Okay. That's four by four. You know, that's, that's all the area you get to, to get that copy area into it. So we're just talking about the, the monument just, itself going up to six feet? No sir, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner, we're talking about the price component of of just the price component. Back to uh, the part that I showed in. Um, we get to it. Computer's running a little slow this evening. Yeah. Uh, just the price component of this. All right? Oh, okay. That's, that cannot exceed six foot in height or 16 square foot in copy area. I understand, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the commissioners? Um, I do have a question, um, and that is, uh, so if we rest restrict it to six feet, so that's the QT signs, what happens with these seven and eight foot signs? Are they grandfathered in? Uh, Chairman Go uh, Chair Golden, uh, any signs that are existing would be able to remain in place. Um, they, if they were to be non-conforming, um, they, they would likely, they, at that point already be non-conforming, they could remain um, in that condition um, as long as they were able. If they did want to change the sign, however, at that point then changes would have to be in compliance with the current regulations. If they were to completely take the piece of the sign down and put something new up, it would have to meet the six foot height for the price component. So, okay. Well, uh, you know, I did, as always happens, as soon as I read this stuff, all of a sudden I see every, every sign. Um, and I'm glad you went out and measured them because I thought, ooh, that looks high to me. Um, but I, I guess my question is, you know, I, I have seen this sign, um, the, Q, the Circle K sign, and seven feet seems acceptable to me. I mean, it doesn't seem that different really than the six foot signs. And I, I guess my question to you is, why not seven feet instead of six feet? I mean, seven seems fine, 
Is, was there something that you guys considered that maybe I should, I should be considering? I mean, eight does seem, I have to admit, eight does seem too high. Chair Golden, uh, while there's no magic number, certainly we took into account a few factors. Um, in terms of signs being too low, one of the key factors is that the landscaping that's required at the base of the signs can obscure the signage. Um, obviously, our generally our monument signs can go up to eight feet. So looking at the six feet, if, uh, while these signs, many of them are level, the two foot difference would allow them to place their logo at up to eight feet in height, still have the price component, um, allow for several feet of that to stick up above the, uh, the monument base. So if you figure two to three feet for landscaping, uh, you, you place your sign above that, you've got about three feet for um, all of your price components, and you can still have the um, additional uh, visibility for your logo. So while six feet's not magic, it did appear that it would allow for um, visibility while not uh, creating any type of um, kind of visual blight, since these can be very close to intersections, um, very close to uh, the kind of the, the street frontage. Um, so we, we were concerned that uh, going too high would certainly be uh, much more uh, possibly visible than some of the other monument signs that tend to be placed um, a little bit farther back or not in such prominent locations. Okay. I, I knew there was something I was missing. So, and, and now that you've explained it, I, get, I, could, I certainly could live with six. It just seemed like seven looked fine to me. Well, Madam Chair, the one thing that I would add to that is in, in talking with the sign companies and the request that comes in, from them the, the magic number seems to be at six. Oh, it does, okay. You know, and that's the most common that, that we've dealt with or in, and that I've dealt with um, as a height requirement request. Um, so when we looked at it and evaluated, and um, based on what Melissa just stated, uh, it, it seemed appropriate. So then, I, then I'm assuming if Circle K needs or, or Chevron needs to replace these signs, it is not a huge expense for them. I mean, in terms of going down in height. I mean, it's not like they have to rebuild a that footer or anything like that. It's just a matter of replacing the four foot. I mean, the six foot. Madam Chair, um, boy, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I've never built one of those, but um, you know, certainly the the illuminated uh, portion of that sign may be able to be altered. I, I I have I wouldn't venture to guess at what the cost of that would be. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, uh, Rick, a, a question. I and the, your pictures kind of bring up the question on the 91st Ave and Olive. It's eight foot. Uh, the sign is uh, based upon the arrow that's there. Is there any provision if there is an obstacle in front, like this is a particular uh, grate or a railing or what have you, uh, is there provision in the, uh, in the text of the amendment that if there is because of safety or city requirements, or et cetera, et cetera, that the sign has a variance that it can go higher so that it's not blocked by this artificial barrier that's there? Commissioner Spraker, there would not be a provision for a, uh, something that's visually blocking it. However, they could certainly apply for a variance if there was a particular situation. However, what was added to the code does account for differences in grades. So right now, if you're in a depression, um, you know, in a, uh, maybe in a retention area, uh, the new language will clarify that you can certainly begin measuring from the curb as opposed to having only perhaps a foot of your sign stick up over the retention basin. Uh, so that has been considered, but a variance would be a, a possibility if there was some uh, extenuating circumstance. Okay, thank you. That really clears it. One other question. You got Rio Vista and Thunderbird, the quick trip. Uh, they started construction, and they're going to put up the, the new building, and I'm presuming they're going to have the opportunity for the six-foot sign, what have you. However, this sign is seven feet, and there's going to be new occupants or new owner, et cetera, for that particular building. Will they still have the opportunity to, to use this monument sign at the height that it's at, or because they're changing ownership and uses and so forth, are they going to have to come into conformance with the new code? Madam Chair, Commissioner Spraker, um, that sign will be removed uh, through the um, contingency plan for closing that building. Um, so any new tenant would have to come in and uh, 
adhere to the current sign code. So the question is, is that sign will come down when they close that store and whoever comes next would have to abide to the provisions that we're dealing with this evening. Um, the other thing I would just say on that note, because that QT, you know, based on um, QT just uh, demoed a, a, a building over off of Carefree or Cave Creek Road just um, um, by Rose Garden. North, yes, sir. And, and um, if you get a chance, go buy it because I used to frequent that all the time. And I know there was a lot of discussion about what was going to happen to this Rio Vista site. Um, I drove past that building twice before I realized it was the decommissioned QT. So I think they're going to do good things there in that site. And I just wanted to point that out since it came up. Thank okay, you. Fine. Thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner Loper? <laughs> oh, <laughs> must have been on the way home, you know. <laughs> okay, um, thank you. Any other comments, questions? Um, do I need to open and close public hearing since no one is here? Okay, I will open the public hearing. Any comments, questions? I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Uh, before we uh, take a vote, uh, did the commissioners have any further comments or questions? Okay, then I, could I have a motion, please? Madam Chair. Commissioner Loper. I would move that we send a favorable recommendation to the City Council for TA 14-0003 as outlined in the staff report. Thank you. I could have a second. I second that motion. Commissioner Nelson, thank you. Would everyone please vote? And it passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, and, and Melissa, thank you. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, seven R election of officers, discussion of possible action to elect officers for 2015. And is staff leading this or am I? Chairman Golden, we, we do have a Thank little uh, uh, additional information for you that may help in your elections this evening. Um, the member, we've put together a bit of a chart here so that you can see based on our uh, records who's been previously in the positions um, that you're electing this evening and who is eligible. Um, as you know, that a member can um, be elected for two terms in any one position. Uh, so after serving two years, uh, they would need to step down. Uh, based on that and our records going back to about 2004, uh, it appears that we do have um, a number of, uh, of you who will be available for each of the offices. You are able to uh, nominate an individual who's not present this evening um, if you are aware that they may wish to, to hold that office. Um, so that would be up to you. Um, I believe that you may have a, a bit of a um, format to follow in terms of elections. If not, I'd be happy to, uh, to provide that to you. Essentially, a member does not need to be recognized by the presiding officer um, to make a nomination. There is no second that is required. Um, so, uh, Chair, you can open up the, uh, the nominations and um, the, the rest of the commission can um, uh, chime in as they would like with uh, a potential nomination for each office at a time. So I think you generally want to handle the chair, then the vice chair, and then the secretary. Each is a separate motion, correct? So um, if, you, if you need any assistance along the way, I'm sure we can uh, turn to our city attorney's uh, uh, rep, so. Thank you. So then I simply ask for nominations, mm -hmm. is that? Okay, commissioners, is there anyone you'd like to nominate for, do I start at secretary I, or, uh, or chair? That one's up to you. Okay, I'm thank sure. you. Uh, let's, uh, let's start with the chair. Is there anyone you'd like to nominate for the chair position office? Sure. Yes, Commissioner Loper. I'll speak since I can't be nominated. Um, and, I, and I'm doing this from what I was told before I was chair and what I've acknowledged and seen since. But historically, there's been a two-year pattern. And it's based on seniority. And it's not written in the bylaws. It's just kind of the way it's been done. And so it's so each year, you, you know, you, you've resided the last two years. 
Before that, you were vice chair for two years. Before that, you were secretary for two years. Same before me, same after me. Um, I'm aware that presently that Lee Strickman is the vice chair. And um, I did speak with her and uh, to see if she had an interest because it's tax season for her and it's, it's a struggle for her right now to always make all the meetings. And I think it's important. You know, the number one ability in anything is availability. But she said that generally speaking, she would be available. And so in keeping with that tradition, I would move that we nominate Lee Strickman for chair for, the, for this upcoming year. And then I'm off and you guys can do next year what you want, but at least for this year. Thank you. Any other nominations? Okay. Uh, do we take a vote on each one separate? Okay. And do we vote now or do we do it at the end? Now. Okay. All those in favor of Commissioner Strickman being Commissioner, I mean being um, Chair, please vote now. Okay. That passes. Thank you. Um, so now we're looking for the vice chair. Any nominations for the vice chair? Madam Chair? Yes. In keeping sure. with that tradition, I would nominate Mr. Spraker for vice chair. Fine, thank you. Any other nominations? Thank you. Could we please vote on um, let, uh, Commissioner Spraker as vice chair? What? Oh, you have to vote. Okay, thank you. Thank you, that passes. And now we need a um, secretary position. Madam Chair? Yes. I think the next one in line, seeing that, watching that train coming, is uh, Commissioner Hutchinson, who has the next seniority. So. In, Unless he's about to bolt, I would nominate him for secretary. Thank you. Um, any other nominations? And then could I, we please have a vote for um, Commissioner Hutchinson as, for secretary? And that passes. Thank you. We now have a, um, a board for the next year. Thank you. And... Let's see. <laughs> no, I don't. It, you know, it really is fun being chair. But, but it's more fun not being. It, but it is more because fun. Because you get the opportunity to speak your mind. That's true. Uh, that is true. That is true. Okay. So the next item of business is the call to the public. And I guess there will be um, no comments from the public. So then we'll have reports from staff. Uh, Madam Chair, I know we had the spoiler alert earlier, uh, but as I mentioned, we will not be meeting on March 5th. Uh, the next regular meeting that will be held will be March 19th. So uh, we'll see you back here in about a month and a half. And so there's nothing on February. Correct. Right. Okay, so we don't right. have. Thank right. you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, anything else from the staff? Okay. Thank you. Um, any, any reports from the Planning and Zoning Commission? Thing. And I, I, I fail to uh, uh, welcome Commissioner Arluski. Thank you so much for joining us, and I know you're going to love it on the commission. It's a great way to learn the ins and outs of the city of Peoria, and I think you'll learn to appreciate what a well-run city it is. So thank you. Any other comments? Oh, yes, Commissioner Wilbur. Uh, two things along those lines. Remember the old adage about sausage and politics? So you'll see that as well. Uh, but I would like to give, extend a thank you to uh, Chairperson Golden for doing an outstanding job the last two years. And Leonard, you and you had to step in a couple times as well, and moving up. So thank you very much. Why, thank you. And if you not giving me all the support, I couldn't have done it. Thank you. You guys have been terrific. So, and I still get to work with you, right? I still get to come? Okay. 
Um, any other comments? And uh, then we'll adjourn. Thank you. <laughs>